than a few blessed days ago, I found you there on that beach. The same beach where my son left from in his fishing boat. I do not question the wisdom of the gods, but I shall never let strangers take you from me now. This portion brought to you today by Rich Delicious Mountain Grown Folgers Crystals and by Cascade, Powder and Liquid Cascade for virtually spotless dishes. I swear I don't know and Lily Wash, the girl who gave me the watch, was named Monica, Monica Holden. Monica Holden. What did she look like? Well, she was young, about 17 or 18. She had brown hair and wide eyes. About that eye. Okay, okay, that was her. Which way did she go? I don't know. You don't know? Well, she went to the interstate. And okay, which said, way was she headed? She's which California. way was she going? She, she, she said she was going to go uh, visit her boyfriend in California. Look, I don't want any trouble. I'll tell you what happened. She came here this morning. She was with a trucker. You know, she looked really tired. I offered her a place to stay. I gave her breakfast. Uh, I wanted to take care of her, you know. And, and she gave me her watch as payment. She slept a couple of hours and she got up and, and took off. Did you tell me that in the first place, huh? Because she, she told me she didn't want me to tell anybody anything. She's long gone. I'm going to find her. And when I find her... She tells me that you laid one finger on her. I'm gonna come back here for you. And you're gonna regret it, pal. Well, I need to get back into Oakdale and make some business calls. All right. All right. Well, please, Tony, you feel welcome to call here if you like. And uh, in fact, why don't you and Meg stay and have some lunch with us? Well, thank you, but I also have to stop by my lawyer's office, so I really should be going. I see you. Please, do come out some night soon for dinner. Just know that. Uh, Know that you're welcome here. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'll send a limousine back for you after I've gotten into town. All right? All right. Oh, I'd like to go by the hospital and say hello to Ivor. You think you could meet us there? I'll try, but don't wait for me. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. So long. Thank you for being so nice to Tony. Well, Meg, he's your husband now. We're going to do everything we can to make him feel part of the family. I know it's really difficult, especially for Seth. Well. But, you know, once you get to know him, you'll really know that he's, he's a wonderful, wonderful person. Oh, we're, we're really looking forward to getting to know him, aren't we, Seth? Yeah. <laughs> Look, Maggie, I... I want to apologize for the way I acted the day that you left to go get married. I, I don't know. I was just, it's just all so sudden. I know, I know. It's okay. It's just that, well, we really couldn't wait. I mean, the immigration was going to come, and they, they were going to take Tonio back to Monteca. You know, mm. I couldn't take that yeah. risk. Oh, oh, I almost forgot. Look, <laughs> this is my wedding present. Oh, my goodness. Isn't it beautiful? Yes, that is. It's very, very beautiful. Yeah. It's the most beautiful, most expensive yeah. thing I've ever owned. <laughs> yeah. Oh, those diamonds? Well, of course they're diamonds. You think he'd give me some cheap piece of glass <laughs> no, for my no, wedding present? No, no, I didn't. Present? I don't... I don't know. I guess it's none of my business. I just thought that... Well, uh, with him not working and all, I thought maybe you guys would be taking it easy on money. Well, I appreciate your concern. But he's made tons of money in the stock market recently, and... I mean, he doesn't even have to work if he didn't want to. Well, I don't know how much money he's made, but he certainly does know how to spend it. That's mm. very lovely. Mm. Very beautiful. Mama, don't worry. Is he going to be looking for, a, For another job here in Oakdale? Well... I don't know exactly. Um, but he's a genius in business. I'm sure he'll be a success of anything he wants to do. Well, as long as you're happy, Meg. That's the most important thing. 
I'm the happiest woman in the whole world. I see I'm here in time to congratulate the new bride. Oh, look at Oh, God. Oh, I've missed you so much, you don't know. Yeah, I couldn't wait to get home. Mm. Mm. <laughs> oh, now, listen, I'm sure you're going to hear from Margot today. Yeah, hon. Well, sure she'll call when she gets back to the hotel, but it's just that if it was good news or if they found out anything, she probably would have called right away. I feel so helpless. I mean, I feel like getting on the next flight out there and going for myself. Well, I'm sure Margot and Hal are doing everything they can. You know, I think it's... Well, it's real nice that you have Casey to talk to about all this, you know. Hmm. You know, I haven't really talked to him about it at all. It's funny, I... It's really hard for me to open up to someone about things I'm scared of. I guess it's because I've never had anybody to lean on all these years. <laughs> it's pretty hard to start learning right now. Well, I guess you could start by just talking to him. I don't know, just tell him what you just told me. <sighs> yeah, maybe you're right. Listen, I gotta get back to work. You okay? Yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll call Casey, okay? Okay. Ah, oh, Dr. Brewster, have you, have you seen Casey? Yeah, he's over at the yacht club tanning his booty. I just left him. Casey's at the yacht club? Yeah, living it up. I got him in as my guest. When the hospital called, I tried to get him to take my shift at the ER, but no way. Couldn't tear himself away. Thanks. I have to be pretty careful. I burn pretty easily. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I don't have that problem. I tan pretty easy. Must be my fiery Italian blood, right? <laughs> uh, look. I want to apologize for blowing up at you when you stopped by the house today. Lila and I have been under a lot of strain since we found out the news about Craig. I understand. It must be terrible for him. Yeah, but it's no reason to blow up at you, you know. Well, forget it. Why don't you just relax and enjoy yourself? I think I will. Jenkins, absolutely not. I will not have you print another story about Craig Montgomery, not until we learn something new. Do you understand? Do you understand? Now, look, it is not fair. When you think about his family, think what they're going through. It is not fair that they should... Oh, oh Mitchell, where have you been? Hi, Mr. Mitchell. Good to see you, Jenkins. Answer me. Lisa, darling, don't I get a kiss before you start interrogating me? No, you don't get anything until you tell me where you've been. All right. I was in the hospital in Key West to see Duncan. Oh, were you really? Uh-huh. Hmm. That's not what he told me. He said that he never saw you while he was there. Well, that's true. But I went there intending to see him, but he'd already checked out. Oh. Now, give me that kiss, you gorgeous creature. Now, don't you try to charm me, Earl. I want to know, where were you after you went to the hospital and you didn't see him? Hmm? All right. All right. Now, an old friend of mine gave me some information about James Stenbeck that I felt that I had to follow up on. Oh, yeah. Well, well and? Go and on. And I am convinced that Stenbeck was down in the Florida Keys when Duncan and Shannon were there at the same time. Oh, dear. Oh, darling. Oh, I have been so scared and worried um. about you. James Stanbeck is such a dangerous man. Oh, that's why I'm always so careful. Oh, you. Come on. Now, this is not a joking matter. This... And I thought this was a place of business. Well, Duncan. Welcome home. I hope you had a pleasant vacation in Key West. <laughs> so, um, what can we do for you, Duncan? Well, I need to speak to someone about placing an ad. Oh, well, what kind of an ad? 
I need a new housekeeper and a new groundsman. Julia's abandoned me. She refuses to set foot in the castle since George was murdered. Murdered? Oh, darling, I have so many things to tell you. Well, did they know who did it? I've my suspicions. Well, who would ever want to kill poor old George? Oh, come on. Poor old George was not so poor after all. He was quite a colorful character. We just didn't know that. Do you know he was wanted in three states and in Canada? He had, well, he had broken out of prison. I don't know how many times he'd smuggled things. Plus, he had killed five people. Well, you do keep interesting company, Duncan. It came as a great shock to me. I always thought George was the gentlest of souls. I just think of Shannon and I were in that castle constantly, trying to think of good ideas to redecorate the place for you. And we had no idea what old George, good old George, was capable of. Well, perhaps this will put a belated end to your snooping. We were not snooping. And for your information, just not too long ago, Shannon said to me, she said, I don't care if I ever see that Duncan McKechnie ever again or his drafty old castle. Oh, hi. oh, it's a mirage, my elusive interior decorator. Well, I'm providing poolside consultation. <laughs> uh, your service told me that you were here, and so I came by with these really magnificent swatches I have for your uh, bedspread and your bedroom drapery. Shannon, I didn't know your interior decorator. Well, I don't advertise, Casey. I work for a very select clientele. Uh -huh. Now, about these uh, Listen, swatches... Listen, Shannon, I really I... came here to relax. Do you think we could meet later at my apartment? Well, sorry, I'm really busy today. If we could just look at... Oh, okay, what, what time? About one o'clock. Uh, I... Okay, I suppose I could juggle a few things around. Ten. Hi. Hi. What's Paul run off to? Oh, I don't know. He went somewhere and did something. He's weird. How do you mean? Uh, just weird. You never know what he's thinking. Well, he's had a lot of problems with his dad. You know the whole story. Yeah. Listen, we're gonna go to the movies tonight. You wanna go? I can't. I gotta study. Tomorrow night? I'll ask my parents, but I'm not gonna hold my breath, you know. The gruesome twosome have really been coming down hard on me these days. Want some? What is it? Vodka and orange juice. Cleverly disguised as just regular orange juice. I can't. I'm a lifeguard. To save lives, you know? Okay. Well, I gotta hit the road. Why? I gotta go check on Lila, see how she's doing. Well, before you go, could you give me one last grace? Thanks, I don't have your Latin skin. I don't want to burn to a crisp. For you! Give it up, Dad. And there are no clocks anywhere in the casinos, and they keep pumping in oxygen, so you never know how late it is. Oh, I think I hear the limo. I really should be going. All right. Mama, Tony and I would really like you to come out to dinner sometime soon. Well, you know, maybe we'll, the day after tomorrow. We'll do that sometime. But, you know, first of all, I would like to, uh, I'd like to give you a reception here, some kind of a party. A reception? Yeah. Perhaps we can invite, the, of course, Caleb and Ellie and the rest of the family. I mean, you, you'd like them to meet Tonio, wouldn't you? I think it'd be lovely. Oh, of course. Um, but, Mama, you can't afford oh, that. No, I know no, things no, are no, really yes, tight right yes, now. Yes, I can. I want to do it. I'll do it. Well, I'll talk to Tonio about it, okay? okay. All right. I, I really, I can't keep that chauffeur waiting. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Listen, Meg, I want to wish you every happiness no. in the world, okay? I still can't believe you beat me to the altar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and thank you for being such a wonderful brother and being so nice to Tony. Mm. You're so sweet. Mm. Bye. Bye, Mom. I'll come out with you. Bye. Oh, That's good. I can you. show you the, the limo. Yes. It's got a TV and a whole bar. Yeah. Mm. Oh, my goodness. So you were nice to Tony, huh? Yeah. yeah. Wasn't easy, either. Oh. But he's, uh, Maggie's husband now. I guess I have to give him the benefit of the doubt, at least until he gives me a reason to think otherwise. Any news of Craig? No. How's Iva? Well, she's very worried about him. Look, there's something I, I gotta tell you. I didn't want to say it over the phone. Yeah. I want to wait till you got here. Uh, Lily ran away a couple of days ago. 
Oh, why? Well, because it's something Lucinda and I have, uh, had kept from her. It... This is gonna come as a real shock. Uh, I wanted to tell you for a long time, but I promised Iva that I wouldn't say anything. Um, Lily is not Lucinda's natural child. She was adopted. And Lucinda never told her. No. I, I can understand why she wanted to keep things quiet. Um, the adoption was illegal, and Lucinda's husband at the time was being blackmailed by the lawyer that had arranged it. Uh, in order to protect Lucinda and Lily, he murdered the lawyer, and I guess he couldn't live with himself, so he finally took his own life. Oh, God. I don't... Yeah. Uh, how do you know all this? I'm getting to that. Um, Lily is Iva's natural child. No, 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 that's, that's not possible. Iva's far too young. It, it no. can't be, Seth. What do you... Iva was just 13 when she had Lily, after Josh had raped her. No, um, I was out of the hospital for a while. Because I went to Dr. Samuel's office, and I was supposed to meet her there, and she's gone, I don't know, maybe she went home. Maybe I'll check my messages, see if she called or anything. I'm sorry, are you okay? I'll go see Sarah's in the cafeteria. I hate this thing. Hi, Julie. Yeah, it's Iva. Oh, well, sure, sure. Put it right through. Hello? Iva? Oh, Holden, have you found Lily? No, nothing yet, but I think I'm on the right track. Where are you? Uh, Mitchell, South Dakota. I'm at a gas station. I stopped at a truck stop this morning in Iowa, a place near Ames, and the guy who owned the place had Lily's watch. Said that she gave it to him to pay for a place to sleep. Wait a minute. Wait, wait. When did this happen? When? Just this morning, which means I'm probably only a few hours behind her. Uh, the guy said that he didn't know where she was going, but that she was heading west. So I figure the best thing for me to do is to just stick on the interstate and catch up with her. Wait a minute. This guy, did he... Did he say that she was all right? Is she okay? He said that she was tired. That's about it. Guess what? I ran into Dusty at the truck stop. I told him that I thought he should go back to Oakdale, but he said no. Holden, please, don't let your jealousy get involved here. It's better if both of you are looking for her. It, it, it really doesn't matter who finds her first. Well, it matters to me, all right? Look, um, I gotta go. I'll call you when I find something out, all right? Okay. Oh, hi, I left Brian with Lila so we have a chance to talk. Hi, I, I just got some good news. Holden called from... Mitchell, South Dakota, and yes. said that somebody has seen Lily, so he's going to try to track her down. That's wonderful. Who knows, maybe that means there'll be good news about Craig today, too. The dark is coming soon. The strangers will be gone from our island, and you will be safe here. My son's wife will return to us soon to help me care for you. She was left barren, but the gods took my son from us. So she is as happy as I am to have you with us now, and eager to have you well again. against body odor and by lemon fresh joy of all lemon brands joy cleans best down to the shine we'll continue with part two of as the world turns in just a moment and now part two of as the world turns 
Jesus. Okay, how much do I owe you? Twenty and a quarter oil. You were real low. It comes to fifteen dollars even with the gas. Okay, then. I couldn't help overhearing a phone call. I guess that picture you were passing around is the one that you were showing when you first pulled in here. Yeah, I was talking to uh, the girl's mother. She must be pretty worried. What did make a young girl like that run away from home? Well, she was upset, and I'm trying to find her to try and explain things to her. You a relation of hers? Yeah, she's my girlfriend. Where are you from? Oakdale, Illinois. You must like her a lot to come all this far. You've seen her, haven't you? Maybe. Please, look, I gotta find this girl. Please. Look, I know you don't know who I am. All right, I understand that. But I swear to you, all I want to do is help her. Look, I happen to love her very much, and I'm worried sick about her. Please tell me. Okay. She passed through here a couple hours ago. She'd hitched a ride with some guy who was driving south to Parkston. He left her off here. She was waiting here for another ride. I felt sorry for her. She seemed kind of frightened, sad. Did she say where she was going? Just she was going to meet her boyfriend out west. Well, what about the guy who was driving her? Who was taking her? Oh, I fixed her up with a truck driver friend of mine. Oh, he's a real nice guy. Won't give her any trouble. Okay, uh, do you know where his next stop is going to be? Oh, I could do better than that. See, she looked kind of scruffy. I figured she was broke. So I told her about this campground up at the Badlands National Park. Oh, it's a real nice, clean place where she can get a shower, get a night's rest, probably even get another ride. This is great. Um, look, I even gave her a... Oh, thank you very much. Um, I gotta get going. I'll sleep Thanks that. again. Now, where can I find somebody to love me that much? You can't blame yourself, Iva. You thought, you thought you were protecting Lily. Look, Sierra, she felt very betrayed and very hurt because I was someone that she trusted. Iva, I think that when Lily has a little more time to think this through herself, she's going to realize that what you did, you did out of love. I hope so. She will. Iva? Oh, Meg, you're back. Yeah, Tony o, I, and I went by the house to say hi to Mama, and then we wanted to come by. Well, I wanted to say hi to you. Well, I better go find Lila and my little baby. Um, Meg, congratulations. Sarah, I heard there's still no word on Craig. I'm very sorry. Thank you. But I'm sure we'll be hearing something wonderful very soon. Yeah. I don't know, Meg. I just, I don't know. I can't believe that you're married. Well, when I went by the house, I was saying to Mama that I really want the whole family to come, come by for dinner sometime real soon. I hope you'll come too. Well, Look, Meg, I, I know that you have a hard time with Tony Oak, but because of what he threatened to do with Lily, but he wouldn't have told her. I swear he wouldn't have. I just, when we went by the house, Mama and, and Seth were so sweet. You know, they were trying to welcome in, into the family and everything. I'd really be happy if you could do the same thing. I don't know, Meg. I don't know if I can. Eddie, you're 12 years old. Get out of the kiddie pool. Here you go, guys. Andy, I've got to get home. Why so soon? My mom's gonna have a fit as it is. I'm supposed to march straight home from summer school to study. I really wish they'd let up on you. No chance. I just can't wait till they go to Europe. And then my Aunt Betty, my mom's sister, is gonna come stay with me. She doesn't have any kids of her own, so she'll let me get away with anything I want. <laughs> Listen, I'll, uh, I'll call you about the movie. Yeah, well, Andy, <laughs> the reason I said I wasn't sure... Well, Pete asked me to go, and I said I would go with him, but I'll try and get out of it, okay? I hope you do. 
me. I think that guy's a real creep, and I don't understand why you hang around with him. He likes me. There's not too many guys I can say You're that. You're crazy. <laughs> Andy, I'm not popular. I don't hang out with the right cliques. I never have. Will you stop that? I think you're the prettiest girl in the school. And if... Look, when you stop running yourself down, we have a lot of fun. You really? Yeah. I don't understand why you keep just cutting yourself down all the time. Look, I, don't mind me, okay? <laughs> I'm just in one of my moods. I'll see you later, all right? Have a nice time at the yacht club? Oh, it was delightful. I think I might be hanging out there a lot this summer. Oh, good. I was surprised that uh, Casey was there without Lila Montgomery. Why? Well, it's just that, that Lila is um, going through such a bad time now with her son missing and everything, and she and Casey are so close. I'd... I was just surprised, that's all. Oh, I forgot to tell you. I asked someone to join us for lunch since... Bob I thought we were to going to be making some final selections here. Oh, we can. I'm sure he won't mind. Hello, Mr. McKinley. Hello, Taylor. <laughs> Craig, Lily, I, I can't believe it. I, I go away for a few days and our whole world seems to fall apart. Sweetheart, there's something else, too, I've got to tell you. The other day, Barbara got a phone call from James, James Stenbeck. He threatened her. He said he was going to take Paul away, and this time it would be for good. Well, she did go to the police about that. Do they have any idea where the phone call came from? No. No, Barbara seems to think that, um, she seems to think he's somewhere near Oakdale. I hate to see that look on your face, sweetheart. Please. Now, listen to me. I want you to stop this investigating of James Stenbeck and stop investigating Duncan McKechnie because we both know what James is capable of doing. Probably Duncan is capable of doing the same thing. You, you just come obsessed with finding out everything you can about the Falcon, yes. No, you Lisa, are. I am not obsessed. Yes, you are. Now, you have already retired from Interpol, so it's no more your responsibility. Ah, uh, it's not that simple. I've worked for years on this case. Now, I have got so much information and connections that it'll take new agents years to find out those developments. Now, now I know that I have got the number one shot about finding out who the Falcon really is. Now, if you, if you think that I am gonna sit here and just let him get even more wealthy and more powerful from his damn drug operation, I... Sweetheart, sweetheart, I, I can't, I can't. I better get lunch started. I'll be right back. No, uh, Taylor, I'll be leaving now. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not letting you out of here until we get some decisions made. I can't go on eating on a bridge table. How much longer do you think it'll be till you finish? Well, actually, it shouldn't take much longer at all because I'm seriously considering dropping another of my projects so that I can devote full time to this apartment. Oh, well, good. Anything to speed things up. I'll be right back. Something wrong? Why did you go to the police with that little box you found in my hotel room? Because I showed it to Lisa and she thought that was the best thing to do. After all, they are looking for the Falcon, and it does have a Falcon emblem emblazoned inside of it, not to mention the imprint for the Ruckle. Why didn't you show it to me first? Oh, you jest. It belongs to you. I never laid eyes on it till Roy Franklin showed it to me at the police station. <laughs> Maybe you convinced Roy of that, but I found it in your drawer, in your hotel room. It was shortly after you told me you wanted me out of your life. Shannon, forever, obviously it was planted there by the same person that knocked me out of my hotel room and left me on that boat adrift to be blown to smithereens. Uh, do you expect me to believe? Is there any reason why you think I'm... I don't give a damn what you believe. Fine. Shannon, listen to me. I'm sorry. I, I told you I wanted to get out of my life to protect you. You're getting oh. involved in things that I don't know if I can protect you from them. Can't you understand that this is not a game? There are serious things going on that if you don't stop your you meddling... Don't worry you... about this at all. There's no problem. I thought I made it perfectly clear that I want nothing more to do with you either. Taylor, I'm leaving now. Oh, no, wait. 
No way. I'll call you later. So, how'd it go with Taylor Baldwin after I left, huh? Foxy lady. Yeah, foxy in a lot of ways. What are you doing here, anyway? You're supposed to be on vacation. I'm looking for somebody. Oh, looks like someone's looking for me, too. You got that, Brady? Bye. Hey, hey, I went by Sierra's looking for you. She said you were over here. What's up? Uh, I'm nothing. Uh, Brian had an appointment, so I came with her. You decided to spend the rest of your vacation here? <laughs> your vacation, too. I thought you were going to work in the backyard. Well, I, I started to. Oh, I, I called over there. There wasn't any answer. Oh, yeah, well, I, I came by here earlier looking for you, and I ran into Jordan. He talked me into going over to the yacht club for a swim. Did you have a good time? Well, actually, I did, yeah. I ran into Taylor there, and I was going to split, but uh, she was on her best behavior, and she asked me to tell you that she's thinking about you. Does that bother you that I was there with her? No, not at all. Are you sure? I'm positive. Then why am I getting these vibes from you? Well, you think I should be in a good mood? Does it mystify you that I'm not in a good mood? I am worried about Craig. I mean, for God's sakes, he may... Sorry. It's okay. I better just go. Well, I'll go with go you. Go home. I'll go with you. No, um... I want to be alone. Yes, well, we are legally man and wife now. Can you honestly say that's all that matters to you? Is that what you were thinking? You made sure that we became a 50-50 corporation first? Would you have done that with Dusty and his trust fund? All right. I was wrong to lie to you about Dusty. But he was the only one there had ever been. And I knew it was a mistake. I didn't want to make the same mistake again. I wanted to be completely sure next time. You mean you wanted to have something in writing the next time? You don't need to make this sound totally one-sided. You had your reasons for marrying me, too, like not being deported. Oh, I was waiting for that. And Meg, it looks like we both got what we wanted. Sorry I couldn't meet you at the hospital. I got tied up at the lawyer's office. Oh, what were you seeing Jessica Griffin about? I didn't see Jessica. I saw a lawyer from Chicago. Oh. But I have some papers I need you to sign. All right. Shouldn't I read them first? If you don't trust me, yes, you should read them, of course. Antonio, of course I trust you. I mean, I hate the fact that we're married and we don't trust each other. Oh, yet. Yet I had to sign an agreement giving you 50% of all my financial dealings before you'd agree to marry me. All right. Okay? I've signed them and I haven't read them, all right? Now, do I trust you or not? Antonio, you said on our wedding night that we could put these problems behind us. Well, I realize now, Mega, that's not as simple as I thought it was going to be. I think both of us are going to need some time. It was so nice of Franny to offer to help with Meg's reception. <laughs> Particularly with your wedding. So close. Yeah, September's going to be here before you know it. I can't say that I'm sorry. Hmm. I don't know. All my children are leaving the home. Pretty soon you'll be having children of your own. <laughs> Probably triplets. Yeah, right. Hello? Oh, hi, Mama. It's Iva. I wanted to tell you that Holden called, but you weren't in. No, we were out in the fields. Is, is there any news of Lily? Well, he hasn't found her yet, but he's in uh, Mitchell, South Dakota. And some woman recognized her picture and said that she was there earlier today. 
Oh, Ivor, that's wonderful news. Holden's on the trail of Lily in South Dakota. So at least we know that she's okay. And this woman said that she was, well, that she was headed to a national campground there in South Dakota, so Holden was going to drive up there. Oh, I know he's going to find her, Ivor. I know he's going to find her, and she'll be home before you know it. I hope so, Mama. I'm just afraid that she's never going to be able to forgive me. Or anybody else who held the truth from her. Redlands National Park. She came through here a couple hours ago. She'd hitched a ride with some guy who was headed south to Parkston. So we let her out here. I felt sorry for her. She looked kind of sad. Frightened. Have you talked to Rod? Yeah, he came by um, to see if I'd heard anything about Lily. I tried to call at Betsy's cabin to let him know what Holden had found out, but he wasn't there. You know, I wonder if it wouldn't be best for everyone if you just left town now. Ivan and her family are never going to be able to forgive him. Well, I don't think he's going to leave town now. Not, not now that he knows that Lily's his daughter. At least not until he's talked to her. Listen, I'm sorry, but I have to go. I just want you to know that, that you and, and Craig and Bryant are always in my thoughts. Thanks. Prim? Mm -hmm. Um, th there's something that I've been feeling. I've been trying to explain it. And I think that you'll understand it if anyone will. The night that... Or the, day, whatever it was, when Craig's plane crashed. I was here, taking a nap. And I woke up with this terrible feeling that something awful had happened. And I, I couldn't shake it for the longest time. But then, when I found out that he was missing, I had another feeling, equally strong, that he was alive and that he was going to be found. Now, in spite of everything, I had just had this gut feeling that he is all right. Just hold on to it. Oh, I will. I have to. It's all I've got now. Please, please call me if there's anything I can do. Yeah, sure. All right? Yeah. Oh, listen, I'll, I'll let myself out. You stay here. It's a great thing, all right? Okay. Bye-bye. Hi there, sweet thing. Hi there. Hi there. Your daddy is going to be all right. He's going to come back to us. <sighs> this will help with the fever. And now that it is dark and the strangers are gone, no one will take you from us, ever.